Hello everybody, welcome back to Lecture 3 from the French Revolution. Today we're going to talk about the storming of the Bastille, what is also known as the Great Fear. We're going to quickly glance over and read through the French Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, which you know what that's based on. And we're going to talk about the March of Women, the Civil Constitution of the Clergy, the Flight of the King, the reaction from other countries, and then we'll end up with the new Constitution of France in 1791. So, thank you for listening. I hope you've got your pens and pencils and paper ready. Remember, uh, this is a note-taking drill, so you should record the facts that are on the slide, the words that are on the slide, as well as get the main points that I'm trying to give to you with my beautiful voice. So, here we go. Storming of the Bastille. So, the storming of the Bastille takes place because these rumors spread that the king is building up troops, and the troops are going to attack the peasants, or the thir third estate. So, rioting starts in the streets of Paris, and on July 11th, Lou, uh, King Louis fires Jacques Necker, the finance minister, and because the finance minister had advocated easing the tax burden on the lower classes, he was very popular with the third estate. So when he's fired, these mobs in Paris react by going out and breaking into an armory and seizing weapons. Uh, then after that, they attack the Bastille, which is a famous prison and armory that was kind of became a, a prime symbol of royal absolutism or about the power, it was really about the power of the king. So by seizing the king's army, the king's prison, uh, the peasants have kind of taken over the Bastille and after a, a battle between the crowd and the prison guards, the Bastille falls, the French soldiers refused to uh, stop the attack which was yet an, again another sign that King Louis was losing further control. And after the battle, the mob completely destroys the prison. The Bastille falls. It's a crumble of burned uh, rubble. In uh, the fall of the Bastille is what becomes the main symbol of the revolution. And in France today, on every July 14th, it is called Bastille Day. It is the equivalent of, the, of their Independence Day, just like ours. So the fall of the Bastille is the main symbol of the revolution. It's also the end of the king's ability to enforce his authority. So after this period, we have what is called the Great Fear. And the revolution quickly spreads from the city to the countryside. So in these, these rural peasants uh, pick, pick up the pitchforks and other crude weapons, and they just start taking over the estates of wealthy people and the country houses of wealthy people, and they seize, they steal and destroy records. And in order to, uh, to restore order, the National Assembly abolishes the feudal privileges uh, to the landowners on August 4th. So therefore now all French citizens are equal in the eyes of the state. So there's no more uh, nobles owning land. All the land has been uh, converted to the people of France. And here you're going to see the Declaration of the uh, Rights of Man and Citizen adopted by the National Assembly on August 27th. Uh, you remember these are the Enlightenment ideals, the outline of basic freedoms held by all members of French society, and it asserts the sovereignty or the power of the people. So just as the Declaration of Independence lays out the ideals of the American Revolution, the French Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen set forth the ideals of the French Revolution. There, this document is adopted by the new French National Assembly on August 27th, 1789. The document embodies all the Enlightenment concepts of freedom, speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, freedom from arbitrary arrest and imprisonment. And the first three articles read, Men are born and remain free and equal in rights. Social distinctions may be founded only upon the general good. Two. The aim of all political association is the preservation of the natural and imperceptible rights of man. These rights are liberty, property, security, and the resistance to oppression. Three, 
The principle of all sovereignty resides essentially in the nation. No body or individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. So in this new French, the voters, the people, are going to have the say in everything. And you will, I believe it's page 120 in your book, you have a nice little reading about the Declaration of the French Rights of Man and Citizen. Um, we will get to that in a separate activity. Next, we're going to go on here to the March of the Women. And you, you will notice that women are not mentioned in the French Declaration of the Rights of Man. So, even though the lower classes endorsed the ideas expressed in the Declaration, the issuing of the document did not satisfy them, largely because the King refused to accept either the Declaration or the National Assembly's abolition of feudalism. King Louis had consequently left Paris and moved to the Royal Palace of Versailles, which is about 50 minutes away from Paris, in order to avoid all this, uh, the riots, the turmoil, the violence. But by October, we go from Ju uh, July to October, food shortages had become critical again. And on October 5th, a starving crowd of thousands of women march on Versailles in order to get the king to accept the National Assembly's measures. By the time they reach the Royal Palace, the march has become a mob. The National Guard attempts to maintain order, but the mob attacks the palace. Only when the king agrees to return to Paris is some semblance of order restored. And once he's back in the capital, the king and his family are essentially imprisoned in Tulare Place, which is the uh, Paris castle for the king. So the March of the Women is all about the dissatisfaction of the lower classes, thousands of starving women and peasants essentially force King Louis to return to Paris. So, next we're going to talk about the civil constitution of the clergy. This is because of the financial crisis, um, and this is about the clergy oath of loyalty. So, because the, and, and in this cartoon you see um, the people are stealing land from the church. Not stealing, confiscating, or reappropriating, or taking it over. So because the French economy still is in chaos, the National Assembly decides to nationalize all church property, and they abolish monasteries, which are where the priests live. The confiscated lands are used as collateral to back paper currency called assignats. The church lands are then sold to bring in revenue, and so many churches are totally shut down. The church was also secularized and reorganized under a civil constitution of the clergy. Bishops and priests are going to be popularly elected. They're going to be paid by the state, and they're going to be required to sign an oath of allegiance to the constitution. So the National Assembly's anti-church members cause a rift, a separation in French society. And really it alienates different parts of the country's population, most of whom were strict Catholics. So from now on, the peasants, who were strict Catholics, frequently oppose other revolutionary changes. They wanted to keep the church, they wanted the church to be left alone, the revolution perhaps went too far in taking over the church and saying the church is now part of the state. So, uh, another big problem with the French Revolution is the uh, constitutional, I guess, the civil constitutionalization of the clergymen. So, meanwhile, with all that stuff going on in the church, the National Assembly is busy restructuring the relationship between the church and state. King Louis the Sixteenth and his family attempt to leave France. Many of the French nobility had left the country since July of 1789. Some of these emigres, as they were called, uh, meet with other European rulers and are asking for aid to fight against the revolution. King Louis, who had been held as a prisoner in Paris since the mobs forced him to leave Versailles, decides to try and join the emigres. But he and his family are caught in the city of Varnes, V-A-R-E-N-N-E-S, 
which lays only miles from the Austrian border. And this attempt to escape really discredits King Louis in the eyes of the public. So now, uh, even the, the Third Estate, the, the vast majority of the population sees that King Louis is trying to get out and join all the other nobles. So I think you know what's coming next for King Louis. So uh, this next picture talks about reaction from other countries. And here you see the Ru uh, Prussian king, Frederick William III, the Austri Austrian emperor, Leopold III, and Comte de Artois, Louis XVI's brother. So um, this talks about the declaration of the Palentz and about possible foreign intervention. So other European rulers viewed the events in France with utter dismay. They were horrified. They were frightened. Not o they were not only frightened about the possibility that the situation in France could undermine stability in Europe as a whole, but they were worried that the revolutionary feelings in France could spread to their own countries, and they would lose their royalty. Uh, one result of this was the Declaration of Pilnitz, which the monarchs of Austria and Prussia state their willingness to intervene in France under certain circumstances, mainly to protect the French royal family. Most people in France see the Declaration of Plinths as an affront to their nation's sovereignty, and several clamor for the government to declare war on Austria, which they view as a threat. So, the French Revolution could extend beyond the borders of France, it could start another war, uh, but we all know what's really happening in France is they don't have much money. So, what's the likelihood of another war starting? Meanwhile, after two years of argument, the National Assembly produces a constitution in September of 1791. This new constitution removes most of the king's powers and provides for a new legislative assembly with the power to create laws. The, uh, this constitution formalizes France's new status as a democracy but it did not solve the continuing problems of the national debt and of food shortages. The search for solutions to these problems lead to a split in the Legislative Assembly. Radicals in the Assembly, the people who are just uh, really want change, they wanted to go beyond the Constitution and make further changes that would give more power to the people. Uh, the most radical group in Paris is called the Sans Culottes, those without knee breeches, and they were named because they wore long pants instead of the knee length uh, style of pants that were worn, worn by the upper classes. So they're, they're the wage earners, they're the shopkeepers, and they want more influence on the government even though they don't sit in the assembly. So of the other factions, the other groups in the assembly, moderates supported some of the change while conservatives supported a limited monarchy. Outside of the assembly, there's still a, a royalist faction that wants the king back, but these were mostly nobles that had become emigres and they had left, and of course they want to come back, so they want to restore the monarchy before they come back. Most people are very much against that. Now, if you look at this painting, it's a painting that depicts, kind of imagines, the 1791 Constitution. And I'll make it a little bigger. Uh, what you can see is this is like an allegorical de depiction of the 1791 Constitution. The woman on the pedestal represents the Constitution. The soldiers on the left, over here, represent the National Guard. And the other people are the citizens of France. So if you kind of look at this, it's a metaphor. Who do you think these people are over here? Where are they going? What do we think of this new Constitution? So, I leave you with this beautiful piece of art. Meanwhile, you should be looking over your notes. You should be reading through them about 10 to 15 minutes every day. There will be a quiz on this lecture on Edmodo. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow where we will continue our reading on the French Revolution. Have a great night.